Okay, as we move into chapter five, we're going to start talking about what are called trig identities. And so we're going to start with these basic trigonometric identities, the reciprocal, Pythagorean, and quotient identities. Now, the reciprocal identities are these first three that are listed here. And these are identities that you already know. We already know that cosecant theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. We already know that secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta and vice versa. We know that tangent theta and cotangent theta are reciprocals of one another. The Pythagorean identities are brand new to us. So what the Pythagorean identities say, the first one is that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. Now, not only are you going to have to be able to recognize sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one, but you also need to be able to recognize these identities in rearranged formats. And so what I mean by that is for the first identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, you need to also be able to see this as, for example, sine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine squared theta. Or similarly, I'll write this below, cosine squared theta is equal to one minus the sine squared of theta. And the way that I got those rearrangements was just by moving things across the equal sign. Tangent squared theta plus one is equal to secant squared theta, or you could say several other things based on that identity that would be equivalent statements to that. And then finally, one plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. And then finally, the quotient identities, tangent theta is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta. We already saw that whenever we were talking about the unit circle. And then cotangent theta, because it's the reciprocal of tangent, well, then that, that's just gonna equal the reciprocal of sine over cosine, which would be cosine theta divided by sine theta. Now, these identities are very important. You really need to have them memorized, but I will let you write them down and use them on your quiz and your test. But as you're working problems, you are probably going to just organically memorize them. Okay, so here in section 5.1 and 5.2, what we're going to practice is just, for the most part, simplifying trigonometric expressions by using identities. And then when we get to section 5.3, we'll actually have a target or a right-hand side that we are trying to end up at uh, at the end. Here, we don't really have that. And so it actually makes it sometimes a little more challenging because I don't know exactly where to stop or how far to go in the problem. And so um, in, in a lot of ways, this is just us getting our feet wet with trigonometric identities, but we do at least have a little bit of a direction here. It says to write in terms of sine theta and cosine theta and then simplify the expression. And so looking at this expression, tangent theta plus cotangent theta. Well, I know that tangent theta using a quotient identity is the same thing as sine theta divided by cosine theta. I also know that cotangent theta is the same thing as cosine theta divided by sine theta using, again, a quotient identity. Now, in order to simplify this, one of the techniques that we oftentimes use is finding a common denominator. And so if I'm going to find a common denominator between these two fractions, that common denominator is going to be the product of the two denominators. And so that's going to be cosine theta times sine theta. Now, in order to make this first fraction, sine theta over cosine theta, have this denominator, it needs to have a sine theta. It already has a cosine theta, but it is missing a sine theta. And so I'm going to multiply this first fraction by a sine theta over a sine theta. That way it will have the common denominator. In the same way, this second fraction already has a sine theta. So you can see here it has a sine theta, but it is missing a cosine theta. So I need to have it uh, make it have a cosine theta. So again, I'm going to multiply by cosine theta. And in order to keep things balanced, I have to multiply the numerator 
by cosine theta as well. And so now both fractions are going to have sine theta times cosine theta, and I just simplify the numerators. And so for the first numerator, I have sine theta times sine theta, which is going to be sine squared of theta, plus in the numerator of the second fraction, I have cosine theta times cosine theta, which is just cosine squared of theta. Now, taking a look at this expression now, hopefully you notice something about the numerator. This numerator is an identity. It is a Pythagorean identity that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. And so this is going to become one over sine theta times cosine theta, which will really become, and now in my final step, well, here's what we can do. We can do what is called peeling. And so another um, strategy that we often use is called peeling, P-E-E-L-I-N-G. And what peeling looks like is basically whenever you have one over sine theta times cosine theta, you can write that as one over sine theta times one over cosine theta. That's exactly the same thing because there is multiplication going on down here in the denominator. By the way, I'm gonna erase this cosine theta here because it's not real clear that that's cosine theta and I wanna make sure that it's totally clear what I meant to write there is cosine theta. And now in the final step, I can use the reciprocal identities to write one over sine theta as cosecant theta and one over cosine theta as secant theta. And that is pretty much the most simplified version of the original expression by using identities and then two strategies that we'll oftentimes use, which is finding a common denominator and peeling. Okay, example B is gonna go by much faster here. So if we take a look at the first part of this expression, cotangent theta, to write that in terms of sine and cosine, we would use a quotient identity to write that as cosine theta divided by sine theta. And then the second part of that expression is already in terms of sine and cosine. So I just write there times sine theta. Now, what I notice is that I have a sine theta in the denominator and it's being multiplied by sine theta. And so therefore that sine theta and that sine theta will cancel. And so my final result will just be cosine of theta. Okay, in letter C, I know that the directions say right in terms of sine theta and cosine theta, but I notice something right off the bat with what is in the parentheses. I know that one plus tangent squared theta is a Pythagorean identity. And so I'm gonna replace that parentheses with secant squared of theta using that second Pythagorean identity. And that's gonna be then multiplied by cotangent squared of theta. Now, one thing I want this example to illustrate is that your uh, reciprocal identities and your quotient identities can still be used even if it is raised to a power. So, and for the example, this is cotangent squared of theta, and that can be written as cosine squared theta divided by sine squared of theta. So, you're basically just putting squareds on your quotient identity. And then secant squared theta using a reciprocal identity is going to be one over cosine squared of theta. What I notice now is that I have a cosine squared theta in the numerator and denominator, so those are going to cancel. That's going to lead me to one over sine squared of theta. And then finally, using a reciprocal identity, I know that I can write this as cosecant squared of theta. Okay, example D here is actually very similar to example A. In fact, the parentheses here is exactly what we had on example A, and so we can sort of go a little bit faster now that we've seen example A worked out. We want to switch that to be in terms of sine and cosine, and so this will be sine x over cosine x plus cosine x over sine x, again using our quotient identities. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to find a common denominator. And that common denominator will be just the product of my two denominators, cosine x times sine x. And then in the numerators, I need to make sure that I 
multiply by something to give each fraction that denominator. So for this first fraction, I know that I'm gonna have to multiply by sine x over sine x. And so that new numerator is going to be sine squared of x. And then for this fraction, I know I'm gonna have to multiply by cosine x over cosine x. And when I multiply cosine x times cosine x, that gives me cosine squared of x. The next thing we did, remember in that numerator, that was a Pythagorean identity. And so sine squared x plus cosine squared x was equal to one. And now, since I have this sine x on the outside of the parentheses, that's going to force the sine x in the bottom to cancel out, which is going to leave me with one over cosine x, which will reduce using a reciprocal identity to secant x. Okay, example E, first of all, I just wanna say as an aside, if you ever show this problem to your little brother or little sister, it will definitely freak them out because it is literally just a long string of letters. And so I just kind of find that a little amusing. But uh, anyways, that's really just an aside. Let's go ahead and get going on this one. Let's rewrite everything that's not already in terms of sine and cosine to be in terms of sine and cosine. And so the first thing we have is sine x. That's already in terms of sine and cosine. We then have cosine x, which does not need to be rewritten. Tangent x can be rewritten as sine x divided by cosine x because of a quotient identity. Secant x can be rewritten as one over cosine x and cosecant x can be rewritten as one over sine x. And so now what all is going to cancel out? Well, I have sine x and one over sine x that will cancel. I have cosine x and one over cosine x that will cancel. And so we'll just be left with sine x over cosine x, which really, to make it most simplified, you could just rewrite that as tangent x, and that would actually be more simplified than sine x over cosine x. I do wanna mention one important thing here, just real quick, and that's that whenever you multiply a function times its reciprocal, that you're always going to get one. And so if I have sine x times cosecant x, I really could have just said, okay, well that multiplied by that is going to equal one. And then just for another example, if I have cosine x times secant x, because those two things are reciprocals, that will also equal to one. And so I could have circled those two functions. And since they're being multiplied together, they would equal one. And then finally, if I had tangent x times cotangent x, I know that that's going to equal to one also and that can sometimes lead you to be able to see things that will simplify faster if you notice that you're multiplying two things that are reciprocals by one another okay here in letter f what i'm going to do here is actually leave tangent x just as tangent x and you're going to see why i do that as we progress through the problem but i'm going to leave that as tangent x and then i'm going to rewrite cosecant squared x as one over sine squared of x. Then in the second fraction, I'm again going to leave tangent x alone, but I'm gonna rewrite secant squared x as one over cosine squared of x. Now, what does it mean to divide by a fraction? We hopefully got good at this whenever we did graphing trig functions, working with fractions. And so what does this mean other than to multiply by the reciprocal. And so tangent x is going to be multiplied by sine squared x divided by one plus tangent x, again, times the reciprocal of one over cosine, which is cosine over one, cosine squared x divided by one. Now, what I notice about these two terms is that they both have tangent x in them. And so just like we talked about how um, creating a common denominator and peeling are gonna be some of our strategies. Another strategy that sometimes is really helpful is factoring. And so since both of these terms have tangent x in them, I know that I can factor tangent x out to the front. And so what is that gonna leave me with? It will leave me with sine squared x from the first term plus cosine squared x 
from the second term. And so now, hopefully, inside the parentheses, you're noticing that this is a Pythagorean identity. And so that is just going to equal to tangent x multiplied by 1, since sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. And so tangent x times 1, then, is tangent x. And so now you can kind of see why I just left it as tangent x, because I could see that that was actually going to end up being the most simplified version of the answer.